It's not just the United States, Japan, and European countries struggling to meet their military recruitment goals, because China's People's Liberation Army is also failing to fill their ranks. Cultural, economic, and demographic factors are all contributing to China's youth being reluctant to join the military. The PLA is still massive at 2 million personnel. However, when we consider the fact that their population is 1.4 billion people, the percentage who serve in China is only 0.15%, which is lower than that of the United States and the majority of countries worldwide. At the same time, China has invested billions of dollars in defense modernization initiatives. So in recent years, Beijing has undertaken serious military downsizing measures by cutting nearly 300,000 soldiers from its land-based forces in 2019. Okay, so wait a second. If they're cutting forces, why are they having recruitment problems? Partly because having more modern weaponry means you need to be able to attract technologically skilled recruits. But before we get into that, I think most people know what it's like to get into a car accident. And if you don't, I envy you. They're not fun. Whether it's a fender bender or God forbid an accident that lands you in the hospital, you need someone on your side to make sure you come out on top. Morgan & Morgan has been fighting hard to get their clients what they deserve for over 30 years. And they'll fight to get you the best results. They don't settle for low ball offers provided by insurance companies. And when you're seriously hurt, your injury could be worth millions. Just in the past few months alone, Morgan & Morgan saw verdicts up to $28 million, and their fee is absolutely free unless you win. Insurance companies are incentivized to pay out the absolute lowest amount possible, and it takes trained and experienced professionals like Morgan & Morgan to adequately assess damages and then properly fight on your behalf to get you what you deserve. Morgan & Morgan won't stop until they know the proper verdict is reached. It takes just one click. You can start your claim now at forthepeople.com slash task and purpose, or click the link in the description below. In fact, if the PLA just wants to recruit more infantrymen for the army, there would be no difficulties at all. As a former infantryman myself, I can tell you that when I joined, they were accepting about anyone with a warm pulse. How do you think I got in? However, the PLA's recruitment target is mostly university graduates rather than just physically fit personnel. Senior PLA officers have admitted that recent recruitment drives have fallen short, saying, quote, we need to do a lot more work, including changes to the recruitment system and making sure that people can develop after serving. That's from Major General Tang Yongsheng of the PLA's National Defense University. And he told this to a correspondent, quote, salaries can't be too low if the PLA is to attract the outstanding creative young people it needs. Their need for carrier pilots is by far the most urgent, and we can see this is how they've changed their standards a few times. In September 2023, the age limit for graduate applications was raised from 24 to 26. The new recruitment flyers in China state that if you want to be a fighter jet pilot, you and your family must have a clean political history. Oof. My political history is filthy. There go my dreams of becoming a Chinese fighter pilot. Most people don't know this, myself included, until I researched this specifically, but China's fighter pilots do not have college degrees, unlike in other places in the world. Why do you think I joined the army? Do you think I like carrying 600 pounds on my back? Until very recently, 2021, China's Navy pilots were limited to just high school graduate age 20 or under. We're gonna dive deeper into understanding China's cultural views on military service, but part of all of this has to do with the fact that in China, they see military service as a kind of blue collar, uneducated job. And throughout their history, that might have been true, but recent technological upgrades is forcing them to change their perspective on military service. Have you tried taking off and firing a missile in the DCS video game? You basically need a four week certificate program to figure that game out. They also have, for the first time in their history, allowed women pilots to fly their heavier carrier-based fighter jets, something that the United States military has done since the 1970s. In December, the PLA official newspaper suggested that the Navy did not have enough fully trained personnel to operate all of their new warships. They dubbed this phenomena equipment awaiting talent. It's not enough to have the largest Navy in the world. You also need the best trained and operated Navy. 
many of China's population is choosing highly paid civilian jobs or something a lot of people aren't talking about right now is that they're choosing to move abroad. The UN keeps track of immigration numbers and we can see here that China has a net negative number of migrants. What that means is that more people are moving out of the nation than moving in. Some people refer to it as a brain drain. China's economy has exploded over the past few decades, but with more wealth comes a more decadent lifestyle because the modern materialistic lifestyle in China has contributed to the discouragement of young people from joining the PLA. They've increasingly had these sedentary habits that have led to issues such as obesity. It's not just us here in the United States eating too many Big Macs. Take a look at this. In 2013, a recruiting office in China discovered that 60% of their college recruits failed physical tests. Furthermore, PLA medical experts found that infantry recruits experienced stress fractures almost twice as frequently as their American counterparts, highlighting the physical challenges faced by recruits. When I was in boot camp, we had like five guys get stress fractures halfway through, and two months in, they had to get sent all the way back to day one, restart training. Stress fractures are hairline fractures of your bones, which are caused by repetitive stress or overuse. You usually get them in your shins and they hurt like a bitch. You're more likely to get them if you're overweight and out of shape. In the United States military, they've tried extra training programs prior to shipping recruits to basic training to get them physically fit enough to not get injured during initial training. The prevalence of obesity in China is also on the rise, with over 50% of adults now classified as overweight or obese in China. The proportion of obese individuals is growing at an even faster rate than that of the overweight population. This obesity problem directly contributes to the high rate of failure in physical tests. Another challenge the PLA faces is a trend among young people to drop out or adopt what they call lie flat or tang ping in China. That's this approach. What, what does it mean to lie flat? Well, it's to seek an easier and more comfortable lifestyle. It's kind of like the, uh, the whole quiet quitting phenomena craze in the United States. Except in China, their communist authoritarian government has a thought police to stop you from lying flat or quiet quitting. Because the CCP moved to stop the proliferation of this idea online by using the Cyberspace Administration of China to internet regulation that ordered the online platforms to strictly restrict posts on the Tang Ping, and they had censors remove the original post on the matter. They even made a discussion group of 10,000 followers in China no longer accessible. Selling Tang Ping or lying flat branded merchandise is also not allowed in China. I guess Reddit does censorship too here in the United States, but this is a seemingly petty counterculture idea that has been shut down. Even hardworking and ambitious individuals can be deterred by the perceived austerity of the PLA. We have to put ourselves in a young PLA recruit's shoes here and imagine where you might get stationed. It's not like in the US where there's a chance you'll be sent to Hawaii or Italy possibly. Your duty station in the PLA could be the far west Xinjiang region that's dangerous or the freezing border in India or the mountainous region in Tibet. I'm sure all those places are beautiful to live in, but to be stationed in, I'm not sure if that's where an average Chinese infantryman would I want to go. Furthermore, mental health has significantly deteriorated among PLA personnel. A survey conducted in 2016 revealed that almost 30% of PLA members reported psychological problems, nearly double the rate recorded a decade earlier. The missile force was particularly affected as its members often worked in remote underground silos, facing unique challenges to their mental well being. Beijing has recently created something that's similar to what we call the Veteran Affairs or VA here in the United States, VA Hospital, which helps former PLA soldiers with their benefits. 57 million military veterans are reportedly waiting in line for that support now. As someone who's dealt with government-run healthcare services, I can recommend they bring a long, good book to read with them while they're waiting for those services. Now, military life can be harsh. The challenging lifestyles within the military poses a significant deterrent for Chinese youngsters considering joining the PLA. One notable aspect is the restrictions on travel for all military personnel, regardless of rank, both within foreign countries and even within regions like Hong Kong and Macau. Soldiers are only permitted to travel within China, while their family members are allowed to travel abroad. 
This policy hinders troops from pursuing a more enjoyable lifestyle because international travel has become increasingly desirable for people in China. Another constraint is the limited access to internet. As early as 2010, the PLA implemented a prohibition on soldiers creating websites or blogs, citing concerns over confidentiality. This means there probably isn't a bizarro version of me in China talking about your average PLA infantryman experience on YouTube. I thought it was only fair since I already covered four reasons nobody's joining the US military. Why is nobody joining the PLA? Additionally, websites that are deemed sensitive by their authoritarian government are routinely blocked. Wang Long, a political commissar for the PLA, was quoted by Shangju stating, quote, soldiers cannot open blogs on the internet no matter whether they do it in the capacity of a soldier or not. The PLA views the internet as a complex environment where they must guard against potential online traps. So there's not gonna be anyone in the PLA all over TikTok talking about joining the military. Furthermore, military personnel are prohibited from placing job hunting or personal advertisements in the media. These strict regulations indicate the PLA soldiers are largely isolated from a fundamental aspect of modern life, the internet. It's difficult to recruit technically savvy soldiers when you're offering them limited access to the things smart people love, computers and the dang internet. There's a theory that part of why recruitment in the West is struggling is because of perception of political correctness in the armed forces. If things are too politically correct in the West, I can only imagine how bad it must be for your average PLA battalion, where they must be getting constant PowerPoint briefings on the virtues of Xi Jinping and the Communist Party. Ain't nobody wanna listen to that. The stringent lifestyle regulations imposed on soldiers pose a significant obstacle for young Chinese individuals considering to join. These restrictions limit their freedom and access to basic modern conveniences, thereby discouraging many from pursuing the military. This is fascinating. And to dive into this next reason, I worked closely with a Hong Kong native who researches China for these videos in order to better understand China's cultural perspective from someone who actually lives it and understands it. Because traditionally, Chinese culture does not encourage the resolution of everyday problems through force. Instead, Chinese parents have historically emphasized the importance of education for their sons. An old Chinese saying reflects this sentiment. All trades and occupations are inferior, and only studying is superior. This belief stems from what they call the imperial examination system. The imperial examination system was a civil service examination system in imperial China designed to select candidates for the state bureaucracy. The idea of choosing officials based on merit rather than birth began early in Chinese history, but the use of written examination as a selection tool gained prominence during the Sioux dynasty. The system reached its peak during the Song Dynasty and endured for almost a millennium until its abolition during the late Qing Dynasty reforms in 1905. Elements of the imperial examination system still exist all the way to today, the civil service entry process of contemporary People's Republic of China. The exams are aimed to ensure a common knowledge of writing, Chinese classics and literary style among state officials. This shared culture helps unify that empire and the notion of achievement through merit provided legitimacy to imperial rule. The examination system also tried to play a significant role curbing the power of hereditary aristocracy and military authority. It led to a rise of this scholar bureaucrat class inside China. Consequently, this system fostered a culture that prioritized academic study. There is a long history of warriors in China, don't get me wrong. Most notably, you got Sun Tzu, but we often forget there is a ying to that yang. There's also an element of anti-military sentiment inside Chinese civilization that can be traced back to Confucius. Confucius is an ancient 5th century BC Chinese philosopher who's generally highly regarded in China. His teachings have had a profound impact on Chinese culture, ethics, and social philosophy. I'd compare him kind of to like Socrates as viewed in the West. Confucius warned against individuals who possessed only the strength of soldiers in several passages of the Analytics. In one dialogue, Zhao Lu asked, does the noble person prize valor? Confucius replied, the noble person values righteousness above all. If a noble person possesses valor but lacks righteousness, chaos will ensue. If a petty person possesses valor without righteousness, they become a bandit. Here in American culture, we currently live in a time that holds a relatively speaking, strong reverence for individuals in uniform. There have been times in history where that wasn't the case. You look at the 1970s with Vietnam veterans being mistreated when they came back. But right now, troops have a very high public approval rating 
that we value their sacrifices. However, in Chinese culture, they traditionally revered scholars more than soldiers. Overall, there is a greater admiration for individuals who possess both scholarly skills than just military ones. This has not disregarded their long tradition of what's called Wen Shang Kang Qing, which is someone who excels at both a scholar and soldier, and I'm sure I butchered that way of pronouncing that. What all this basically means, though, is that your average person's point of view in China, the military is perceived as somewhat unattractive. It's also widely known that the PLA is dealing with serious corruption issues. Rich families have paid recruiters to avoid conscription for their families. PLA personnel frequently pay for promotions. The institution has some cleaning up to do before attaining more respect. The impact of the one-child policy has been huge, too. The recruitment of the PLA is significantly impacted by the infamous one-child policy, which had far-reaching effects on Chinese society. Under the policy, many families have only had one child, and parents are often reluctant to expose that single child to any potential danger by coddling them. I have a brother and sister, so if I didn't make it back from Iraq, it wasn't that big of a deal. According to an article written in Newsweek by Adel Badar, this is exactly why the CCP has been releasing footage of PLA soldiers enjoying hot pot and playing video games willy-nilly while stationed in the inhospitable Himalayan environment so their parents would be reassured that they were safe and sound and taken care of while deployed. Implemented between 1979 and 2015, the one-child policy was a population control measure aimed at curbing China's population growth by limiting families to a single child. But what's often missed here is how that strict policy enforcement meant that people in the military had less kids. So with military families having fewer children, there's a reduced likelihood of encouraging the next generation to join the military. This is because in the United States and worldwide, one of the biggest influences for joining the military is whether you have a family tradition of it. Can China's recruitment be improved in the future? Despite the major problems faced in recruiting for the PLA, they are making efforts to try to fix it. Will it work though? Increasing conscription likely won't work for them. Enlisted troops mostly volunteer, but they can be compelled to join to meet quotas to serve a mandatory two-year term. Since the late 1970s though, China has used a hybrid system of volunteers and conscripts. How about increasing the patriotic vibe? Nationalism inside China has seen an upsurge as tensions around the globe have escalated. The PLA attempted to bolster their public image with propaganda films like Wolf Warrior 2, released in 2017, about Chinese elite special forces units. It was widely successful there. It's like the Chinese version of the Expendables movie in the United States, except the movie's tagline is literally, quote, anyone who offends China, no matter how remote, must be exterminated. Wow, I really hope wolf warriors don't watch my videos. This movie tells us a little bit about how China wants to be perceived as a global superpower instead of just a domestic force, because in it, the soldiers help Africa build their economy and their doctors help cure a deadly disease, all while taking knocks at the US. Personally, and this is just me speculating here, but I feel China's military is searching for what messaging works best and clicks with people on a wide national level. So since 2020, the PLA has implemented new strategies. Officers and NCOs are issued a 40% pay raise and given more home visits. China now recruits twice a year instead of just once. They use all kinds of data analysis that's employed to identify volunteers with required skills. Health checks have become more nuanced, which they hope will raise standards for certain positions, like special forces. China adjusted their laws with their conscription to focus on adding college students and technologically proficient people. Interestingly, the uncertain economic future of China that you've probably heard about recently may, ironically, ease some of the difficulties for the PLA. China's economy has been weighed down by property market difficulties for over two years. The government plans to strengthen financial support for real estate companies could impose an excessive burden on the financial system. Mishandling the response could lead to severe consequences, including increased defaults on bank loans, potentially impacting all kinds of banks. With the serious downturn in the Chinese economy, Chinese youths are confronted with a high unemployment rate. In June, the urban jobless rate for individuals aged 16 to 24 hit a record high of 20%. Although the government temporarily suspended publishing youth joblessness data without specifying a timeline, the number of candidates taking Chinese civil service exam has reached a record high as graduates seek secure employment. 
However, only a select few will secure government positions. This year, competition has intensified with over 3 million candidates sitting for the exam at the end of November. While local civil servants have faced salary cuts, civil servants of the central government and PLA soldiers remain immune to such measures. In China, a military job can be comparable to civil service. A soldier who served a minimum of 12 years and attained the rank of sergeant can apply for a transfer to other government agencies while maintaining their benefits and rank. For young people in China, unable to secure their desired jobs, joining the PLA can be an appealing choice as it offers stability and a clear path forward. Whether or not China's PLA is able to recruit enough qualified troops and train them to standard remains to be seen. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Follow me at Cappy Army on Instagram. Slap that like and subscribe button. Signing off this net time now.